Good morning. I know. Breathing and breathing. Good morning. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for joining today uh, live Q&A uh, with WHO. Uh, it's working from home edition. Um, we're all working from home today. I'm your host, uh, Sari Satyogi from WHO Department of Communication. Uh, and with me today is Dr. Pura Raiko Solon, a scientist in WHO's Department of Maternal, Newborn, Child and Adolescent Health and aging. Uh, and we're going to talk about um, a very important topic, uh, breastfeeding and COVID-19. Um, we know a lot of uh, mothers and healthcare workers who support them have many questions about whether it is safe uh, for mothers uh, with confirmed or suspected uh, COVID-19 to be close to and uh, breastfeed their uh, babies during the um, during the pandemic. Uh, WHO has recently uh, published a list of frequently asked questions uh, about breastfeeding and COVID-19, uh, which provide information uh, for healthcare workers and families about um, uh, a protective uh, effect of breastfeeding and skin-to-skin uh, -skin, uh, contact. Um, and the harmful effect of inappropriate uh, use of infant uh, formula milk. Formula. So, yeah. So, uh, Pura, let's uh, talk about those uh, FAQs. Okay. Um, yeah. So, COVID-19 is currently spreading around the world. And uh, many mothers have concern, like uh, what uh, I said earlier. So should mother actually continue to breastfeed if COVID-19 is uh, prevalent in their communities? Can you tell us? Um, yes, if COVID-19 is prevalent in your communities, yes, uh, definitely you should continue breastfeeding. Um, uh, live COVID virus has not been detected in breast milk. Um, and there's no evidence of transmission of COVID-19 through breast milk. Um, so there's really no reason to avoid or stop breastfeeding. Uh, breastfeeding uh, for improved survival, provides lifelong uh, health and development advantages for newborns and infants, and has health benefits for the mothers as well. Right. Um... And uh, I think the, the, the biggest concern is whether uh, COVID-19, the, the virus that caused the yes. disease, can be passed to mm -hmm. breastfeeding. What do we know about that so far, Pura? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know that there's no evidence of transmission of COVID-19 through breast milk or breastfeeding. Um, the live uh, COVID-19 virus uh, has not been isolated from uh, breast milk in any mothers uh, who have uh, who are confirmed or suspected to have COVID-19. Um, some we know of two breast milk samples that have been positive by RT-PCR for COVID-19 and this means that we can see RNA particles in the breast milk but these are not necessarily viable virus. Um, so again there is no live COVID-19 virus in breast milk or breastfeeding um, there's no evidence of transmission to breast milk or breastfeeding. Um, and uh, breast milk, as you know, and breastfeeding uh, imparts uh, numerous uh, substantial health and uh, development benefits for both the infant and the mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, if then uh, a mother decided to continue breastfeeding uh, when mm -hmm. um, she's uh, suspected or confirmed with COVID-19. Yeah. Um, what yeah. are the hygiene recommendations that uh, she should mm -hmm. take to protect mm -hmm. the baby? Okay, so to protect the baby um, through droplet transmission of droplets from droplets of transmission of COVID-19, uh, the mother should frequently wash her hands with soap and water or alcohol-based hand rub. Um, she should wear a medical mask while feeding um, and uh, this mask should be replaced while once it's damp it should be immediately disposed of 
It should not be reused and do not touch the front of the uh, medical mask. Also, it's important when you're coughing or sneezing to cough and sneeze into a tissue, dispose of this tissue, wash your hands again, um, and also to clean surfaces, clean and disinfect surfaces that you touch um, frequently. Yeah. Okay. So maintaining the hygiene uh, measures uh, and a moderate yes. and uh, yes. breastfeed uh, safety. The infection uh, prevention and control measures. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think we started getting some questions here. I'm going to uh, uh-huh. read uh, some questions. Um, we got a question from... Um, Calvin Mamari asking about if there is any proof that breastfeeding doesn't transmit coronavirus. I think you answer about this a little bit earlier. Maybe you can repeat again. Uh, yeah. Or... Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yes, of course. Um, so indeed, we are tracking WHO um, brings together experts from around the globe to discuss the latest evidence and WHO continues to um, be on top of this evidence. We provide guidelines uh, around uh, breastfeeding and COVID-19. Um, and to date, there is no evidence that breast milk or breastfeeding transmits um, COVID-19 infection. Yes, it is safe to continue. In fact, we recommend that mothers who are um, suspected or confirmed to have COVID-19 continue to breastfeed throughout their illness and after. Uh, in March, and I'm a breastfeeding mom myself, um, and I actually continue breastfeeding my son when I was sick. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, wonderful. Uh, he he didn't get he didn't get uh, sick actually so wonderful yeah. that's wonderful continue breastfeeding um there's yes absolutely absolutely there's also um really very recent the report that uh, a research group was able to isolate antibodies against the uh, SARS-CoV the virus that causes COVID-19 in breast milk so there's a real possibility that um breast milk and breastfeeding itself protects the infant from COVID-19, um, there right. is this possibility. Antibodies are in the breast. Um, and in fact, this is really one of the big advantages of breastfeeding and giving breast milk, that uh, the infections that the mother has gone through, um, she transmits that protection to her infant through um, immunoglobulin, th- through antibodies in the breast milk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. There's a, a lot of uh, mm-hmm. benefit from from breastfeeding also Absolutely. for for COVID nineteen. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, another uh, question is um, when we are talking about wearing masks. I mean, I um, mm-hmm. I am lucky enough that. Um, I can put on mask uh, when I was six, mm-hmm. so I can uh, breastfeeding uh, my son. But if yeah. uh, there is no medical mask available, no. uh, yeah. what that what can um, what can a mother do? Okay, so again, just to reiterate that we recommend that when uh, mothers who are confirmed or suspected to have COVID-19 are breastfeeding, they should be wearing a medical mask where this is possible. But really, mothers should continue breastfeeding regardless of the availability of the medical mask. And this is because breastfeeding is, has so many advantages. Um, and when you compare that to the potential risk of transmission of breast milk of uh, COVID-19 to the infant, um, the benefits and harms are are very much towards breastfeeding. So yes, continue breastfeeding regardless of availability of a medical mask. Yeah, thank you, Pura. Um, We uh, started getting more questions from the audience. but before uh, we go there, uh, another question that um, often mothers ask is, um, should they wash uh, their breasts before mm. uh, breastfeeding? For example, if they just cough uh, before right. they breastfeed, um, is that necessary? Right. 
Okay. So if uh, she has been coughing directly on her naked chest or breast, then yes, uh, she should gently wash her chest uh, for 20 seconds with warm water and soap uh, um, and then uh, breastfeed. But otherwise, no, um, it's not necessary. And it's not necessary to wash your breasts uh, prior to every breastfeed or prior to expressing breast milk. Right. Um, so for those who just joined us this afternoon, uh, today we are talking about breastfeeding and uh, COVID-19, the importance mm -hmm. to continue breastfeeding um, for mm -hmm. um, mothers who are suspected or confirmed with COVID-19. Uh, now, Pura, we are uh, going to answer some questions that we receive from mm -hmm. our audience uh, on social media. Mm -hmm. There's a question okay. from uh, Fong Sui Hin. Uh, I think she um, tapped on what you said earlier about uh, mm -hmm. immunity um, from mm -hmm. uh, breastfeeding. Uh, her question is, is there any advice to strengthen the immune uh, system so um, mm -hmm. uh, mothers produce uh, more uh, 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 antibodies, antibodies. For, for babies. Yeah, uh -huh. is there okay, is so there a for, tips for that? Okay, so right now this science is really very new, um, but we're really happy that we can find uh, immunoglobulins. I mean antibodies in the breast milk that really good news and that means uh, there's a possibility that indeed the mother can transmit that protection to her infant as she's breastfeeding. Um, as to what you can do, uh, it will be things to improve your general health. Um, have a healthy diet, physical exercise, enough sleep, um, especially especially if you're feeling very stressed, they're anxious, um, uh, right, it's it's very very important to take care of yourself. Make sure you mm -hmm. also recover well from this illness, and then you can continue breastfeeding throughout. Uh, at least let us uh, reassure you that that is safe. Um, there's no evidence of transmission of COVID nineteen through breast milk or breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Um, we get a comment from Aqua Sana uh, Dansua, um, who says that uh, she's happy to share uh, that at least there are two pregnant women in Ghana who uh, were infected with COVID-19. Uh, uh -huh. They safely delivered their babies and uh, the mothers Wonderful. and babies are doing very well with the mother's advice to practice uh, safe protocols when breastfeeding the babies. This is wonderful, mm -hmm. Pura. Um, yeah, anything wonderful. Uh, that you would like to, to say? Indeed, that's truly, truly wonderful. Um, and all of these stories, of course, uh, um, are, are wonderful to hear um, that uh, the mothers are, are enabled to continue breastfeeding. Um, there's another aspect that's also very important, especially in the first hour after you give birth, and that's skin-to-skin -skin contact. Um, and that's also very important because it improves thermoregulation, glucose control, decreases the risk of, um, of jaundice in the infant. It uh, increases the maternal satisfaction, maternal infant bond. Um, it has so many uh, advantages, um, not least of which, of course, is that the babies are less likely to die. Um, so this what you do in the first hour of life, of course, very important. Aside from that, that immediate and continued skin to skin contact as soon after birth uh, also facilitates breastfeeding, which of course, as we know, also has its own advantages for both the infant and the mother. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, from my own experience, when, when I had COVID, um, I think one thing is you feel very tired and I think uh, different people have different uh, uh, reaction to the virus um, what uh, if mothers are um, too unwell to breastfeed mm -hmm. their baby directly um, mm -hmm. what what would be the best way to to feed the baby mm -hmm. okay so so again, um, often mothers are able to continue breastfeeding uh, throughout their illness. If this is not possible, if uh, you are too unwell, 
um, to breastfeed, the next best alternative is to express breast milk. Um, and this can be done in many ways. Uh, this will be, of course, up to your preference and what's available to you. You can express breast milk uh, manually uh, with your hands or a manual pump or an electric pump. Um, the important thing to remember is, of course, again, the infection prevention and control measures. You have to make sure that if you use equipment, that they're uh, clean and disinfected uh, before and after you use them. Um, so, yes, uh, express breast milk um, is really a, a very good alternative to direct, direct breastfeeding if you're unable to directly breastfeed. Um, another option would be donor human milk uh, if you have access to a human milk bank. That's also a very good option. Um, for some countries, some cultures where it's very acceptable to uh, have wet nursing, that's also an option, wet nursing. And then, of course, uh, if you are in a country with high HIV prevalence, there will usually be um, national uh, guidelines around wet nursing. For instance, you might need to do an HIV test or an HIV risk assessment. And then, of course, the very last option um, is uh, infant formula, if, if nothing else is, is available. Um, and then, of course, this is if you can ensure that the infant formula is safe, uh, feasible, correctly prepared, it's, uh, and it's sustainable in terms of supply. Right. Thank you, Pura. Uh, now, talking about that, we got a question from um, Islam Madabat, um, who mm -hmm. asks, uh, I assume that um, he or she, uh, she is a healthcare worker working in, mm -hmm. in the um, working where they're probably treating mm -hmm. people with COVID. Mm -hmm. um, can mm -hmm. they still uh, breast pump safely in, mm -hmm. in healthcare facilities where there are COVID patients? Mm -hmm. um, yes, but you have to ensure um, that your infection prevention and control measures are in place. Um, and you have to disinfect and clean all of the equipment um, that are used uh, for each mother, um, right? Uh, so that there is no transmission through droplets. Uh, in fact, this is what we are, we will be concerned about in this case. So keep all the equipment clean, follow the uh, manual, the instruction manual, um, if it came with the instruction manual, um, to make sure that the equipment is always clean, disinfected, um, and is safe to use for mothers. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Pura. So it it is still possible, yeah. But uh, we follow the the infection yes, prevention and control definitely. measures as, yes. as well. Yeah, and always, yeah, and always wash the hands before handling this equipment. Also, very important. Yes, yes, yeah. I remember I was washing my hands a lot. That it became really dry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the way. This is the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's another comment uh, from uh, Sarah Jones, um, who said that my toddler was uh, presumed to have COVID-19. Uh, he had the symptoms for two weeks, um, and one week was particularly bad. Uh, and um, there are days where he didn't want to eat, uh, mm -hmm. drink anything other mm -hmm. than continue to breastfeed. Uh, mm -hmm, and that mm -hmm, helped mm -hmm. to ease his symptoms and provide comfort wow. as well because uh, he's close to the mother. Uh, anything that you would like to comment on this, Pura? Yeah, that's that's a, that's a wonderful story. And indeed, that's true. Um, that, uh, that breastfeeding in itself isn't just the nutrition for the child. There's also a lot of cuddling and mother-infant contact. And that's really important in the early years. Um, and uh, I, I congratulate her for continuing to have, um, to, to provide this environment for, for her son, her daughter. Um, and uh, try to, even in these times where there's a pandemic. Um, and here's the thing, right? I mean, probably no one, uh, especially the new parents, probably none of them, um, envision that they would have um, this this very special time with their child in a time that a pandemic, right? Um, and that's very scary and a lot of parents are very anxious and 
and concerned and probably a little bit uh, resentful or disappointed also that it just it isn't turning out the way they probably imagined because uh, no one probably could have uh, would have imagined that they would be bringing up their very young child in a pandemic. So I, I congratulate her definitely. I mean, it's important to remember that in these early years, it's also very important to keep a nurturing environment, a nurturing, secure safe environment for the child to grow in, to continue that responsive caregiving, continue to respond to the infant or child's cues, uh, play with them, talk to them, cuddle. Um, because it's really important as, uh, as uh, in these early years, as their brain is uh, developing at a fantastic rate, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, very important to remember that. The parenting is just as important now, even, probably even more as when um, we don't have a pandemic. Right. Um, yeah, so uh, I welcome again um, those who just join uh, this live Q&A today. Uh, we're talking about uh, breastfeeding and COVID-19 and um, how um, mothers um, should continue breastfeeding um, even when they're um, suspected or confirmed with COVID-19 uh, because the, mm -hmm. the benefit is, is actually big, like what you just said, Pura. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, with, with uh, this outbreak, um, uh, parents feel uh, anxious, uh, mm -hmm. panic, uh, mm -hmm. and sometimes they... Uh, they're listening to people who said that, oh, you probably are not producing enough breast milk if you are sick, mm -hmm. um, if you are anxious. Mm -hmm. um, is it safe to feed uh, babies with infant formula milk uh, instead of mm. breast milk? Mm. Mm. Well, feeding infant formula milk uh, to infants always come with risk. Um, so no, it's it's not safe, and we don't recommend it. Uh, there's all there's always risk, and and the risk increase when um, home or community conditions are compromised, when there's uh, increased pressure in the health system, when there's less access to health services, less access to supplies or clean water. Um, so yes, it's it's uh, you have to think about all of these things. Uh, if uh, your option is to uh, to give infant formula, you have to uh, make sure that it's feasible, sustainable, safe, properly, correctly uh, prepared, um, and so forth. Uh, but yes, indeed, uh, if you can breastfeed, that is so much. If you can breastfeed, that would be so much better um, for the child. Um, and and as healthcare workers, right. We are duty bound. We should support the mothers to enable her to breastfeed, um, counsel her, support her on proper positioning, on on latching and attachment, um, and uh, and all these things uh, are able to uh, enable more milk production. Also, um, so as well, it's important for the mother, of course, to take care of herself, be well rested, have a healthy diet some physical exercise um, if she's able uh, and yes continued support from from the people around her to enable her to breastfeed thank you Pura um, and uh, with that um, there's a question from Farhana Sharmin who asked for uh, when the baby is above six months so it's past the mm -hmm. um, the uh, exclusive breastfeeding, exclusive. yeah. Um, is it uh, still important to continue breastfeeding, or should uh, emphasis be given on complementary feeding? Well, certainly, at six months, uh, around six months, that's the time that you should start to slowly introduce complementary feeding, safe and healthy uh, complementary food, while you continue to breastfeed. Um, because uh, the complementary foods will not be able to uh, 
to um, give the, all the nutrient requirements that, that complementary feeding will be able to give, especially at the start. And we know that breastfeeding and breast milk continue to have advantages um, as you continue breastfeeding to two years and beyond. So yes, continue breastfeeding, yes. Uh, thank you, Pura. And uh, other than breastfeeding, we are also talking about skin to skin, um, uh, where a newborn um, usually yes. are immediately put uh, skin to skin with the mother after birth. Uh, yes. During uh, COVID nineteen, uh, should mm -hmm. a baby still be immediately put uh, skin to skin and breastfeed by the mother? Yes. Yes, yes. So, yes, uh, because skin to skin contact, immediate and continued skin to skin contact as soon after birth as possible. As soon as possible after birth, immediate and continued skin to skin contact has multiple benefits uh, for both the mother and the infant. Uh, it improves thermoregulation, glucose control, decreases. Um, uh, uh, and other and other physiological advantages, there are many. Um, it decreases the amount of time that the mother and child stays in a birthing facility, for instance. It increases mother satisfaction, the mother-infant attachment. It has multiple benefits. And, of course, it facilitates um, early breastfeeding, which in itself is very crucial and has many, many advantages for both the mother and the child. So, yes. We do recommend skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact. The mother and child should not be separated from each other. Um, continue with this with kangaroo mother care. Um, if the if the neonate is very sick and needs specialist care, then really the the facility should ensure that the mother is able to to visit and uh, be with her infant uh, even in this circumstance. Uh, thank you, Pura. Um, we are getting some uh, repeating questions from our audience mm -hmm. who just joined. Um, so okay. maybe uh, you can um, repeat again uh, how a mother who's suspected or confirmed with COVID-19 can still uh, breastfeed the baby safely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so breastfeeding uh, with or without COVID has multiple advantages. Um, in terms of uh, improving survival, promoting lifelong health and development for the child. There's also uh, health advantages for the mother. She's less likely, for example, to have uh, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, type 2 diabetes. Um, and uh, the child can, can have a... There are multiple um, repercussions later in life in terms of lifelong health and non-communicable uh, diseases for the infant who's breastfed. Um, so it's very important to continue breastfeeding. And if a mother is suspected or confirmed to have COVID-19, we recommend that she continue breastfeeding throughout her illness and beyond um, because of the many advantages of breastfeeding. Um, in fact, there's uh, new information that now antibodies have been uh, reported to be present in breast milk of mothers who uh, have uh, confirmed COVID-19. So again, another advantage. And indeed, that's one of the advantages of breastfeeding and, and breast milk feeding, that the, the mother's uh, immune response is, uh, is, is translated. There's uh, immunoglobulins, uh, antibodies mm -hmm. from the mother's previous illnesses, mm -hmm that is in the breast milk and which then protects the infant. It's a way for the mother to pass on that uh, protection to her infant through breastfeeding, through the breast milk. So it has many advantages and we recommend that mothers suspected or confirmed um, COVID-19 continue to breastfeed throughout their illnesses, throughout this, their illness and beyond. Um, of course, it's important to also have uh, infection prevention and control measures while you're doing this. Frequently wash your hands. Um, ideally, if you have, if you can, if it's available, have a medical mask while you're breastfeeding. Um, clean surfaces, clean and disinfect surfaces, and cough and sneeze into a tissue, immediately dispose of it, and then wash your hands again 
Um, so very important things to remember as you're uh, breastfeeding your child. Thank you for um, so yeah, I mean, uh, for mothers uh, uh, can continue breastfeeding safely. Uh, don't have to to wait uh, for a treatment uh, to mm-hmm. to finish uh, when they are uh, yes. confirmed with COVID nineteen. Yeah, because we are getting several yes. questions on that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's true. Uh, while they are sick, while they have confirmed or suspected COVID-19, yes, we do recommend that they continue breastfeeding. If they are not able to, the next best alternative is to express breast milk and then feed it to their child. Um, So this is an alternative, also a very good alternative. Um, And really, if the mother is not able to breastfeed, um, not able to express breast milk, once she recovers from her illness, it's then important to support her to initiate breastfeeding, support her to relaxate so that she can continue breastfeeding her infant because of the many benefits of breastfeeding. And remember, there's no evidence that COVID-19 can be transmitted through breast milk or breastfeeding. Right. And... um... Uh, yeah, WHO has uh, recently published um, uh, a list of frequently asked questions on mm-hmm. breastfeeding and COVID-19 that um, you can find on WHO website. Mm-hmm. It is www.who.int. Uh, mm-hmm. And that uh, frequently asked questions provide information for healthcare workers uh, and families about breastfeeding uh, in time of COVID-19. Uh, Pura, another question is for mm-hmm. healthcare workers uh, okay. who are um, uh, providing care for COVID-19 patients, but also breastfeeding mm-hmm. at the same time. Is there any uh, mm-hmm. specific uh, measures that they need to take? Mm-hmm. So, um, as with any uh, healthcare worker with, uh, with COVID-19 um, infection themselves, uh, there are uh, multiple um, recommendations about how to protect yourself and uh, the the patients that you are seeing um, in terms of per- personal protective equipment and, and how to take care of yourself as well as the, the people you are supporting. Yeah. This is uh, very important and, and yes, WHO has lots of resources on this. Uh, thank you, Pura. And um, when we're talking breastfeeding, some some questions that we receive are also related to pregnancy. Um, what mm-hmm. are our advice uh, to healthcare workers um, for their uh, uh, patients um, uh, going through childbirth during uh, COVID nineteen? Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, so. Um, uh, so, again, there are resources at the WHO website. There's also uh, a Q&A, uh, a very easy to read uh, question and answer portion, all about childbirth and breastfeeding. Um, but I think the, the main uh, message is that um, the mother should have respectful care, um, appropriate care, as if uh, she didn't have COVID-19. Of course, uh, infection prevention and control measures have to be put in place um, to protect also the healthcare workers uh, around her. Um, But yes, it's important to remember that she needs care as much as uh, she is pregnant, she will deliver soon. She's probably feeling very anxious uh, and concerned uh, about the future of uh, her and her her child. Um, So it's important to give this kind of support. Uh, to pregnant mothers right now. Thank you, Poor. Um, so I think we are uh, at the end of uh, our live Q and A. Is there any mm-hmm. um, any uh, take home message that you want to give to our audience? Um, maybe just to say that um, that we know that breastfeeding has a lot of advantages. Um, in terms of health for both the child and the mother. 
Um, and we know that there's no evidence of transmission of COVID-19 through breastfeeding or breast milk. And, and still we get a lot of questions about whether mothers should breastfeed, mothers should continue breastfeed, breastfeeding when they have COVID-19 infection. And of course, this is because uh, people are afraid, right? People are afraid, they're anxious, they're very concerned. Um, and they really just want the best for their infants. And, and that's completely understandable. And part of the confusion is that we tell everyone to keep one meter apart, right? A lot of countries are under lockdown um, and uh, people are physically distancing. And, and, and these are all good, except for the mother and her child. Um, because this, this time in the early years is so precious and it has so many benefits for the child to have breastfeeding, for the child to grow up uh, with nurturing care and responsive caregiving, um, to know that they're in a safe and secure environment. So, so um, I understand that there's a lot of anxiety uh, and uh, a lot of um, confusion, but also um, to say that WHO uh, brings together experts from around the world, looks at the latest evidence, and really the best thing you can do for your child is to breastfeed. Thank you, Pura. And with that, um, I would also uh, thank you and uh, thanks our audience as well who have joined us this afternoon. Um, we have viewers from India, Australia, uh, Swaziland, Zambia, Ghana, Singapore, Indonesia, Somalia, Botswana, Nigeria, South Africa, the Philippines, uh, Italy, Nigeria, New Zealand, USA, uh, Saudi Arabia, Colombia, Ethiopia, Kenya, Germany, Peru, and Oman, and many more. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, the recording you, of this live. Thank you. The recording of this live uh, will be available on our social media channels and uh, for more information about the frequently asked questions on breastfeeding and COVID-19, uh, you can find that on our website, www.who.int. Uh, I'm your host, Sari Satyogi. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, until next time. Bye.